two months after the resumption of the diplomatic relations between China and Nauru, Nauru's president, David Adyang, started his first state visit to China. He was impressed by China's sustained high-level growth over the past few decades. He emphasized Nauru's desire to stand on the right side of history and praised China's global initiatives for injecting new vitality into the world. He stated that China's rise has not come at the expense of other countries' interests. David Adyang, president of Nauru, sat down for an exclusive interview with Leaders Talk. to Leaders Talk, where we meet leaders, thinkers, and trailblazers. I'm Zhou Yun. Here in the tranquil setting of Hainan's Buao amidst the Boston activity of the annual conference of the Buao Forum for Asia, we are about to have an exclusive interview with President David Adion of Nauru. Well, this is his very first state visit to China following the recent restoration of diplomatic relations between the two countries. Against the backdrop of this historic occasion, we'll delve into the significance of resuming relations with China from his perspective. How does he envision the future of bilateral exchanges and cooperation across various domains, propelling the ongoing development of this relation? Here is my interview with David Adion, president of Nauru. Your Excellency President Adion, thank you so much for joining us on Leaders Talk and great to have you with us here in the beautiful island of Babuao. I guess it might remind you of home. So this is your very first official visit to China since uh, the bilateral relations were resumed back in January. How's the trip going? So far so good? I've been overwhelmed by the hospitalities and courtesies, the, the friendship extended by the government and people of China. Um, but also uh, extremely impressed by the uh, great potential and promise of collaboration on matters of mutual interest, uh, but in particular also in um, promising ventures that will help uh, assist the development of my country. You met with uh, Chinese President President Xi on the 25th and had an in-depth discussion uh, about uh, how to bring this fellow relation forward. Well, during the meeting, President Xi said that friendship, whenever it is started, is, uh, will have a bright future and cooperation, whatever its size, will be productive as long as it's sincere. So what impressed you the most about this meeting with uh, President Xi? President Xi was, uh, I thought, impressed me how well briefed he was about the issues that concern Nauru. Mm -hmm. um, his openness and his willingness to help, and the fact that he treats uh, Nauru as one of the smallest countries with such uh, respect and candor in his uh, discussions is what really um, touched me and my, and my delegation about uh, the relationship and going forward in building that relationship. So, Mr. President, what's your impression of President Xi? How do you view President Xi as a leader? And uh, what is your take on his uh, political thoughts? He is a very impressive leader. Uh, his world view, his view on, on the world mm -hmm. and how our countries should interact and help each other and treat each other with mutual respect is really quite refreshing. Um, I, I get it also that he also loves his country very much. He's very passionate mm -hmm. about leading the, the government and the people of China to a stronger and a better and a brighter future. And wherever possible, where we can help that in any way, uh, my small country can assist. Um, but really, we are here to build on a new relationship and we look forward to working very closely with the government of the people of the Republic of China. Well, during this meeting, you told President Xi that the decision made by Nauru stands on the right side of history. And I also remembered on January the 15th in the statement that the Nauru government, uh, you know, put in its uh, statement when the decision was announced. 
it said that this is in the best interest of the Republic and people of Nauru. What does this decision really mean for the people and development of your country? As a, one of the smallest countries in the world, a small island developing state uh, challenged by uh, the normal challenges of developing a country, one cannot ignore China and the rise of China. It has an important role to play in developing humankind. And we note, we acknowledge and we support the initiatives by His Excellency President Xi Jinping. And we support those initiatives. Uh, we want to be part of those initiatives as well. As you mentioned, that Noro has welcomed and supported uh, the vision of community of shared future, as well as the Global Development Initiative, the Global uh, Security Initiative, as well as the Global Civilization Initiative put forward by Chinese President President Xi. How do you understand the significance of those initiatives? Yeah, I think they are very refreshing for the for the world. We want to be a part of those initiatives uh, as much as other countries as well. Uh, we uh, have our own unique particular set of challenges and whatever assistance that um, China can, can give us is more than welcome. We are will, willing and ready to be a part of those initiatives as well. Actually, the level of support within the uh, Nauru parliament in severing the so-called diplomatic relations with Taiwan and resuming this relation with China was unprecedented. We heard that that time, you know, where this political resolve was supported by each and every member in the parliament, which was kind of unusual to have this uh, overwhelming mm. consensus. So what do you think are the key You know, it's not easy to mm -hmm. get uh, uh, legislators agreeing on anything on any time of the day. Right. But on this matter, it was quite uh, unique mm -hmm. because both sides of the parliament, indeed all members of parliament who were attending the sitting on that day were quite happy. Um, there was actually no debate on the matter. We voted unanimously to mm -hmm. support the resolution to uh, recognize and support the One China Principle and to move along with the bilateral relationship. Uh, we stood in support, we signed a resolution and I believe also that uh, all members of parliament will be coming here sooner or later mm -hmm. to uh, help build that relationship. As I said, we want to be on the right side of hi history and we will be. What do you think are the major factors that contributed to such uh, you know, unanimity? In the Pacific, we are being constantly challenged nowadays by uh, our traditional partners. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes to choose your friends and take sides. But Nauru, and I believe I speak for others in the Pacific, we consider ourselves friends to all, enemies to none. We find uh, China's approach as a uh, in, in global affairs, very, very refreshing. It has uh, no issues in, in Nauru. As, uh, we want to be a partner of, of China uh, moving forward. And we see a lot of uh, potential in, in China's uh, rise in, in the world. I think wherever possible, I think any um, support that is coming from China can only be to the benefit of the people of Nauru. Well, Mr. President, as you mentioned a bit earlier, that the cornerstone of this decision is actually the Nauru government accepts the One China principle and also recognizes uh, the People's Republic of China is the sole legal government representing the whole of China. Well, this is in line with the UNG 2758. So what is your understanding of uh, the One China principle? And more importantly, how does your government plan to uphold this principle? We already have uh, severed our so-called relations with the Taiwan region. We hope that uh, in time, as Hong Kong rejoined uh, China, so also will the Taiwan region. Mm -hmm. I think history will, will prove us right. History has shown and I think the future will continue to show that will, will happen sooner or later. And that is our understanding of the One China Principle.
As you may know, Nauru was the 183rd country to establish diplomatic relations with China. And especially starting from recent years, we're seeing increasing number of uh, countries that has decided to um, resume or establish diplomatic relations with China. This is uh, the best testament that shows uh, upholding the one China principle is in line with the trend of history and the times. So what do you make of this uh, unstoppable trend? As you said, I don't, I don't think this, the trend is stoppable. Mm -hmm. It will continue. Um, history has shown and the future will show that uh, the trend will be that uh, more and more uh, countries will recognize the, and support the One China Principle. We have seen this uh, in other parts of the world, but we have seen this in the Pacific. We are just uh, only the latest one mm -hmm. to come in, and who knows, maybe others will follow. We heard that during the 2023 Pacific Games, so many people mm -hmm. who went there were overwhelmed by the China Bell Stadium, mm -hmm. and uh, among those guests, you are one of them. Yes. Was that the case? I was encouraged by um, members of my government to attend the Pacific Games in Honiara last year. Mm -hmm. uh, not only to support our athletes, but to witness for myself what China has done for the Solomon Islands, particularly in the capital of Honiara. Mm -hmm. I would not be overstating uh, to say that Honiara has been transformed by China's assistance. Uh, the level of support and the, the, the state of the buildings and the infrastructure created by China's assistance, China with its abundant capacity, uh, its willingness to help, um, its, uh, its attitude of uh, mutual uh, respect and respect of countries, small and large, rich or poor, uh, powerful or not. Um, this is what I, I found very refreshing. President Adian, can you share with us what is your vision in bringing this bilateral relation to an even higher level? I think we can offer our loyalty and our friendship. Uh, we understand the values of the, the values that are held uh, uh, deeply and closely by the government and the people of, of China. Uh, we recognize that, particularly the uh, One China Principle. Mm -hmm. And I think that should be um, uh, a strong part of the relationship. Those who are already in a relationship with China uh, welcomed us. Um, those those who, who are not, right. I think, mm -hmm. I think we will surprise them with what we can do in the very near future. We offer ourselves as a, a model of development of what progress and development can and should be in the Pacific. I want to show you some photo. Let me get uh, the phone from my colleague. You're quite well briefed and researched. I'm really quite impressed. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. I'm impressed with your excellent answers as well. Here, so you were in Beijing and you went to the Great Wall, the magnificent Great Wall, and it looks like you had lots of fun. I, so, I'm told I was the 534th president to <laughs> visit the Great Wall. So when you were there touching those bricks and stones that has been laid there for thousands of years and uh, taking a photo with a stone steel engraved, he who has never been to the Great Wall cannot be considered as a true man or true hero. But yes. you were there and take a photo, so you're now a true hero, right? So it must be an unforgettable journey for you, I guess. Yes, uh, to have visited the, the Great Wall mm -hmm. and also the Terracotta Warriors, impressive where uh, the, the civilization of China has come from. And I think there's a lot of uh, experiences to be shared there and lessons to be learned. Uh, we are a very young country. We are only about 55, 56 years old. Um, that is nothing, of course, uh, compared to the, your rich history. Um, it is a great honor and a privilege to be here uh, as a, a personal guest of uh, His Excellency President Xi Jinping and to visit um, these historic uh, cultural sites is something we will never forget. You were in Xi'an oh, yeah. visiting those uh, Terracotta warriors and you said you've been dreaming and wanting to go there since you were a child. So this is like a dream yeah. come true or? Yes, I, I think I might have uh, read about them in the National Geographic magazine or Mm -hmm. or in a TV show and for so many decades I've it's been on a bucket list and I never imagined that I would 
come and visit the Terracotta Warriors as the personal guest of the President of China. I am immensely uh, heartfelt and in, in awe of what has been achieved to locate and preserve and share, share the history of China with not just with the rest of China, but with the rest of the world. And you even took a selfie with one of those warriors. So is it what you have uh, imagined or is it different from what you have no, I, thought of? I always um, I dreamed, mm -hmm. but never imagined that I would actually be there mm -hmm. uh, to be there so close to a terracotta warrior who has been in existence um, over 2,000 years. Yeah, it's something I will always remember. I heard that you even did some research by yourself before going there. Well, I've... <laughs> that was surprising to me as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think most people were surprised that I would choose the Terracotta Warriors. Maybe they, they thought I'd go out shopping. I, I'm more of a uh, history buff. And I think uh, history happens for a reason and history takes us uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, to a future that, uh, that we can, from the lessons of our, of our past, can guide our future. And I think that's why history is important. It is. Do you know any particular, or are you particularly interested in any part of the Chinese history? Or generally speaking, what do you think of uh, some think of the Chinese I, history insp inspirational to the generation I think the, the journey that um, China has experienced is one where the, the rise and the fall of the Chinese uh, civilization is, mm -hmm. is uh, I think, has a lot of lessons for other countries. Uh, we are now witnessing the rise again of China. And it's a rise, uh, I think, uh, not at the expense of other countries. It, is, uh, it has not invaded one country that I can remember from history. And I think this is a lesson for, for countries to follow. And His Excellency President Xi Jinping in our discussions um, makes such comments that uh, China has a lot to offer to the world. It's, um, it's not to be feared, but it's to be befriended and partnered with in order to jointly develop the world. It has much to contribute. And we want to encourage that too. Since you're here for about three to four days, very um, diversified schedule, meeting with Chinese senior officials, mm -hmm. go to those archaeological sites that you've been drained of, visiting the Chinese uh, uh, companies and um, all this. How do you understand China's path towards modernization? And which part of this development is inspirational or particularly in inspirational to the development of your country, Mr. President? I've, I've seen how China has been able to maintain a high level of economic growth mm -hmm. and sustain it for multiple decades. Right. Uh, sustaining it for a few years is hard enough for any country, but sustaining it for decades and taking hundreds of millions of people out of poverty. Nearly 800 million people in the past 40 years. Yes. yes. This is nothing short of amazing. There are lessons there for people, for people and countries to take and to try and apply where, where applicable, mm -hmm. um, where those lessons can be applied to other countries, particularly developing, developing states. And then I think that is what people look for when we, when we come to China. You have an amazing story to share with the rest of the world. And sometimes uh, the media outside mm -hmm. of China does not say, does not mention this, right. does not portray it as accurately as it should be. Now there have many unfair accusations about oh. the rise of and development yes. of China. Since this time you're here witnessing everything with your own eyes, how different is it compared to the portrayal that you just mentioned that oh. you get from other media? Well, when the other media have uh, particularly, I would say a negative narrative, but you have to come to China, mm -hmm. uh, you have to uh, a witness for yourself and have an open mind and understand the histories and the experiences of the Chinese civilization. And, and I guess my, uh, I'm cheating because I had a conversation with your president and I know <laughs> what his ambitions are and what he wants to do uh, for the people of China and how he wants to achieve it in, with the rest of the world. Well, Mr. President, even though this valor relation has only been resumed for about two months, people-to-people -people and culture exchanges are actually uh, flourishing 
uh, for example, China Media Group and uh, Noru uh, Media Bureau, this time signed an MOU. You and President Xi were there to witness the signing. And uh, also, I think very shortly after this uh, bilateral relations uh, was uh, restored, China Media Group launched a uh, reporting station in Yaren district of Nauru. Mm -hmm. So how do you understand the significance of media collaboration in promoting communication and enhancing mutual trust? Yes, and, and also be, uh, promoting people-to-people uh, -people exchanges, understanding each other's um, uh, viewpoints, mm -hmm. uh, values, and cultures, and traditions, and histories. Each country is where it is because of its history and its experiences. We are trying to learn more from China because it is where it is, because of its rich history and its abundant experiences. Another milestone event for your trip is that uh, Nauru has officially joined China's uh, Belt and Road Initiative and uh, this uh, cooperation documents was signed under uh, witness by President Xi and also you. So how would you interpret the significance for Nauru to join this initiative which was proposed by President Xi? What kind of development opportunities do you look forward to see and what might be some of the potential areas for future cooperation between the two countries? Uh, our economy is uh, very small. We depend mostly on our fishery sector and the extraction and export of phosphate revenues. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we need to invest in these more uh, and also perhaps more also in tourism so that we can uh, get better economic diversification to get improved economic and financial stability. Mm -hmm. uh, anything that, that can add to the infrastructure that promotes uh, economic diversification can only be to the interest of our economic and financial stability. Another important area for both countries to make joint efforts on is uh, tackling climate change. Given that Nauru is a Pacific island facing severe challenges of uh, average uh, temperature increase as well as uh, sea level rise. So what is your outlook on the cooperation between the two countries on that front? We think um, uh, China has a lot of uh, experience with um, addressing this. Um, we, uh, by, by July, will be 45% um, renewable energy mm -hmm. thanks to a project that uh, Chinese uh, company is building, uh, our solar farm. Yes, uh, we want to the photovoltaic. We recently visited um, uh, a site in Xi'an where yes. they are the leaders in photovoltaic uh, technology. Mm -hmm. Hopefully with, uh, with that and with the support of the government of China, we can improve our, our renewable energy to more than 45%. But also, um, because of, clim of climate change and sea level rise, uh, our coast needs to be better protected. Right. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can also get some technical assistance to address that. But uh, and also, imp a very important uh, idea for us is to move our people from the coast and move them to a higher part of the island mm -hmm. uh, to escape the ravages of the ocean that and, and sea level rise. Uh, it is a very major project to be relocating uh, perhaps 75% of the population over time. This will not happen overnight, but with the support and the assistance of the government of China, I think it, it can be feasibly done. Each day, there are millions of stories. Each one can open new perspectives, new possibilities. Wherever you look, we are there. To see, discover, explore. We put the pieces together to find what really matters to you. All around the world, all around the clock. Our reporters are at home across the globe. From our headquarters in Beijing, and production centers in Washington, Nairobi, and London. Stories from across the globe, reaching people across the globe. CGTN, see the difference. You are 
a seasoned uh, politician in Nauru and you have served multiple roles in government and you were one of the youngest member in the parliament for many years, I I'm heard. I'm very impressed by you. Right? <laughs> so what vision do you have for the future of the country? You know, if, if we can get just a small fraction of the capacities and the technologies and the assistance that uh, is potentially available from China, we can easily transform a tiny country from Nauru, uh, from what it is, to a beacon of, I would say, of what progress and development should be in the Pacific, if not the world. We are trying to do that uh, very fast. Uh, we have a team, we have a Chinese team in Nauru already, working with our officials as we speak. Mm -hmm. um, the day I left, uh, they, they were arriving in Nauru uh, to work with our officials on what uh, projects we can work on in order to deliver what your president says should be early harvest of our bilateral relationship. Mm -hmm. And of course, there will be early harvest and not so early harvest and future harvests. We also heard that you are an avid fan of sports, especially powerlifting. Oh, no, so you are, you are, you are I'm really, really surprising me. <laughs> <laughs> I think sport and uh, looking after your, your, your health has a lot to do with your ability to be productive so you can serve your country, your family and the people who look up to you. Okay, President Adian, it was such a great pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You, you do your homework very good. Thank you. During the interview, President David Adion expressed his passion for the Chinese history and culture. He also reaffirmed his unwavering stance on the restoration of diplomatic relations with China. Looking towards the future of our bilateral cooperation, President Adion expressed optimism with a focus on equality, mutual respect and win-win cooperation. It is believed that the ties between China and Nauru holds a promising future. With that, we're going to wrap up this edition of Leaders Talk. I'm Zhou Yun reporting from Hainan province. Thank you for watching and see you next time.